the iPhone, Pixel and Building Information Modeling. What do these three have in common? Apparently, the Midas touch of no other than Steve Jobs. It's the 1980s and Steve Jobs meets Gabor Bozar, the founder of an obscure Soviet startup located in Hungary called Graphisoft. Did Jobs simply manage to recognize a fellow innovator in Bozar, or perhaps he could easily see the massive potential in his ideas? But by the end of this fateful meeting, Steve Jobs decides to donate some of the first Macintosh computers to Graphisoft, the company that went on to develop one of the first modern building informational modeling software software. As of 2011, the statue of Steve Jobs stands in Graphisoft Park in Budapest as proof of his involvement in yet another massive technological advancement that reshaped our world and the way we build. Welcome back, this is me, Christina, and my superpower is helping creative people get the best of any software faster. Today I'm going to talk to you about building information modeling and specifically how my perspective on BIM has changed over the past seven years. Over the past seven years, I've been lucky to explore pretty much any available BIM-related role out there, starting as a BIM modeler, later becoming BIM coordinator and eventually becoming a BIM manager. And although I'm currently working mostly as a developer and a consultant, I would say that my perspective on BIM continues to evolve and change. Some of the juicy historical facts that I will touch upon today were brought to my attention by Lois Torres and the development of BIM by Artem Rico, and some of the very interesting ideas about BIM in relation to data and data analysis were brought to my attention by Beyond BIM by Ignacio Rincon Goya. I've made sure to link both of these articles below, so make sure to check them out later on. But what's building information modeling to begin with? Well, I can tell you what it was for me when I started out, and it had little to do with its lengthy definition of creating digital representation of the physical and functional characteristics of a building. In fact, looking back, it had more to do with parametric modeling than anything else. By the time I had graduated as structural engineer, I had experience with dynamic blocks uh, and annotative styles in AutoCAD, so the idea of creating views from a 3D model and perhaps attaching some metadata to its geometrical components definitely felt native to me. In 2017, Revit had seemingly checked all boxes and was taken off by a mile compared to its direct competition. However, in reality, Revit wasn't doing much for structural engineers other than allowing them to create some floor plans and sections. And in general, detailing for wood framing, steel framing and concrete were pretty much underdeveloped, leaving engineers with the choice to either try and develop their own tools within Revit or search for better readily available alternatives. The requirement for working in different environments drove a sort of wedge between architecture and engineering disciplines in their adoption of the technological aspect of BIM. Structural engineers were perhaps either trailing behind, sticking to CAD solutions for reliable outcomes, or opting to go and work with Trimble. This made implementing BIM's ideas about enhanced collaboration and coordination rather messy in practice. 
the architectural engineering and constructional industry was definitely at a place where we could acknowledge that we were rather winging it. However, there was definitely this hopeful outlook that once we learn to work properly with Revit and Dynamo, once our tools improved, we're going to arrive at this BIM model with the right level of detail and impeccable quality of data. When BIM goes wrong, we like to blame it on pseudo BIM or the practice of faking parts of the BIM process by not extracting the project documentation from the original BIM model. However, while there was definitely a point in time where architects and engineers were faking it alike and doing some post-processing in CAD to get their drawings right, I believe that the accusations against building information modeling about making the design process more time-consuming and more expensive are in a way true, especially when it comes to the BIM-centric version of BIM we know now. The understanding of data management was becoming increasingly BIM-centric. That is to say, we were growing increasingly concerned with the execution of our BIM models, which led to rigid, company-specific modeling standards and perhaps too much reliance on a 3D model to host all the possible, necessary, relevant information in a construction project. Our preoccupation with modeling the right way established the demand for introducing new roles within the traditional architectural or structural company. And indeed, between the period of 2017-2021, there was definitely a demand for BIM modelers, BIM coordinators and BIM managers. And although there was definitely an impressive ring to each of these new roles, suggesting that the people who will fill them will work at the forefront of innovation, in reality, it looks like this was our flawed attempt at bridging, perhaps, the gap between our skills, tools and feverish BIM-centric dreams of BIM models that yield accurate product data and perfect quantities. Each of these people were supposed to add an additional layer of quality control over the BIM process. However, in reality, they would also add human hours and some individual human errors. Once you emerge on the other side of following all guidelines, however, you will easily realize that even the most pristine, well-documented BIM model could easily yield data that's either insufficient or inaccurate by a mile. And hence the frustration with BIM, all stemming from this focusing too much on the so-called BIM model while ignoring the miscellaneous data sources that are circulating around. Data in a construction project is dispersed. That is to say, it's in different formats, repositories, departments, and even companies sometimes. A BIM model cannot be considered the sole reliable data source for a construction project or used as a universal database to store any metadata. Moreover, I would say trying to lump together all geometrical data with all metadata is not necessarily doing us good every single time, considering that tools like Revit focus on visualizing and presenting geometrical data and have rather limited options available for analyzing, visualizing and presenting metadata. The quality of data does not depend on the authoring tool either. In fact, it depends much more on the competency of the person behind the tool. 
A simple sketch created by a senior structural engineer could be much more valuable than an impressive 3D model created by a person who has no construction background whatsoever. Ironically, the true benefits of BIM seem to lie beyond BIM and come much closer to data science and the ability to clean, validate and structure data from different data sources. Data and data modeling has been a game changer in the way I apply building information modeling principles in my work. But what is data modeling to begin with? Data modeling is the process of creating a conceptual representation of data structures, relationships and rules within a specific domain. It's a fundamental step in designing databases, data warehouses and other information systems. To put it plainly, any project should, should start by defining the parameters you want to quantify, their units of measurement and how you will extract them from the available data sources. Implementing data modeling principles, data science and analysis is nothing new to project management. But BIM definitely took a minute to mature into understanding its importance. Or shall we say perhaps all the BIM specialists responsible for its adoption who came originally from engineering or architectural background. This collective trend towards data conscious BIM is becoming more and more evident in the standards we are developing and seek to establish today. Take IDS or information delivery specification. In the words of Building Smart, IDS is a standard in development defining information requirements in a way that's easily read by humans and interpreted by computers. It helps people in the built asset industry to better define their exchange requirements and add clarity amongst various stakeholders. If you're much like me and you have spent almost a decade filling these transitional BIM roles, you probably feel a little bit confused as to the nature of your profession. The implementation of BIM requires so many diverse skills. Understanding architecture and project management for construction, understanding 3D modeling tools, and having at least some degree of visual programming and data proce processing skills. However, for all of its peculiarities, I'm becoming more and more convinced that building information modeling could not be considered a profession, but rather a framework we choose to apply to our jobs as architects and engineers. Which poses another question. Are BIM roles truly future-proof? Well, here are my personal predictions about uh, the future of BIM employment. Well, I believe the role of the BIM modeler will fully merge with the role of the designer as more and more people graduate from university fully capable of working with BIM software tools. Hopefully the role of the BIM coordinator will be limited to managing class detection and communicating project requirements. And when it comes to the BIM man and when it comes to the BIM manager, as I would imagine, this role will transition into something closer to data scientist or data analyst. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. All the opinions I shared with you today are formed by my own personal experiences within the architectural, engineering and construction industry. So I'm really, really curious, what's your perspective on BIM? And specifically, is data truly the future of building information modeling? And as per usual, make sure to like and subscribe.